Tonight on To The Point, combating retail theft. Paying is not going to be optional in San Joaquin County. The new program working to help local businesses deal with the increase. Plus, as the A's plan their move to West Sacramento, the impact it'll have on current employees. And as President Biden tours the Baltimore Bridge site, what's next for reconstruction? Tonight, we verify who will front the bill. We're still tracking some showers and snow showers for the Sierra tonight, how long they're lasting and where we're looking at the biggest threats for thunderstorms. And later on the back roads, we visit Alpine country to see what you can catch lurking below the ice at Caples Lake. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday on To The Point. I'm Alex Bell. Now, from smash and grabs to people just running out of the stores without paying, I know, I mean, Californians, we have seen an increase in retail theft. And ABC 10's Gabriel Porras explains how a new partnership in Stockton is stepping in to help small businesses. Paying is not optional anymore in San Joaquin County and that we are here to prosecute it. Strong words Friday from San Joaquin County's district attorney promising to crack down on retail theft in front of a room full of business owners. Moments later, <laughs> the DA signed an agreement with the Greater Stockton Chamber of Commerce. Talking to my fellow chamber leaders uh, around the state of California, this is the first uh, for California as well. We really wanted to um, take the grassroots effort, public Public-private partnerships are the way to go. Collaboration, you can get so much more done when you're working with other people. And collaboration will be key for the new START program, which launched Friday under the agreement and with the help of a $15,000 contribution from San Joaquin County. We're unveiling new technology that's going to work very well so that uh, individuals that continually uh, serial shoplifters from our uh, community uh, can be prosecuted. The new technology includes an app for business owners to report crimes. The chamber also plans to host workshops educating owners on topics like how to be a good witness, how to best place security cameras, and use of force policies. I'm uh, very confident that this will be an effective partnership. We're looking forward to, like I said, just getting out there and, and doing something different because what we're doing right now isn't working. The new program is in partnership with the Chamber of Commerce's nearly 850 members, including the Weberstown Mall, where police are investigating 38 cases of theft since the beginning of the year. But chamber officials say that businesses don't have to be members to make a difference. If you spot it, stop it. Dial 911 and let the professionals handle it. I know people are frustrated and sometimes they just don't report them. And so we're like, we need these numbers, we need the statistics, we need the data to be able to be more effective. Chris Podesto, the general manager for Food for Less and Ventral San Miguel Markets. The crime has been rampant. Is hoping the new agreement will be effective. We spend a lot of money on security to detour it, uh, but when they're not prosecuting them as they have not been in the past, it, it hasn't helped us. But now help is on the way and Chris is optimistic. We think this legislation and this new effort is gonna really help uh, curb uh, crime in our community. And many of the business leaders that we spoke with uh, proposed reforms to California's Proposition 47. If you remember, that bill was passed back in 2014 and it downgraded dozens of nonviolent property crimes to misdemeanors. Now, there is a ballot measure being proposed to reform that law, but it needs nearly 550,000 signatures to qualify for that November ballot. All right, new tonight, the suspect in a Woodland homicide has turned himself in. Officers say 31-year-old Joseph Dyer was involved in that deadly shooting that happened Tuesday morning at a home on Ashley Avenue. Now, police had previously arrested another suspect, and they say they located the gun used in the incident. The victim was also identified as 32-year-old Jesus Talento of Woodland. And an update to a story that we brought you last night. Police say one man has died and another is in the hospital after a stabbing in Old North Sacramento. It happened near Traction Avenue and Colfax Street around four yesterday, and it's still unclear what led up to it and if there are any suspects. But if you do have any information, make sure you give the Sacramento police a call. The announcement of the A's temporarily moving to West Sacramento has a lot of questions, including what is happening to the current Oakland employees. Here's what the A's president had to say. We are partnered with the River Cats and, and the Kings on some of the aspects of putting the games on here. And we're going to work closely with our staff, and many of those staff have been here a long time, to ensure either they have a spot here in Sacramento or maybe in Las Vegas, because we'll be opening an office there soon. 
And he also says they will look at putting together severance packages that are similar to what other teams have done when leaving Oakland. And we've also learned that the A's could be changing their name when they come to West Sacramento. So here's the deal. Applications were filed with the United States Patent and Trademark Office for the terms Sacramento A's and Sacramento Athletics. Now, this process generally takes anywhere from 12 to 18 months. So if everything goes smoothly, people could potentially see Sacramento A's merch just in time for opening day at Sutter Health Park. Today, President Biden toured the site of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse, and the president met privately with the families of six construction workers who were killed when that bridge collapsed. So he also offered his support to the entire city of Baltimore, reiterating his commitment to rebuilding. Folks, finally, we're going to move heaven and earth to rebuild this bridge as rapidly as humanly possible. And we're going to do so with union labor and American steel. And the Army Corps of Engineers is laying out a timeline to get that port back up and running. Officials saying that they hope to clear metal and concrete debris in the next four weeks to open a channel for some smaller cargo ships. The Corps of Engineers aims to reopen the entire port by the end of May. And the bridge repair is estimated to cost anywhere from $400 million to more than a billion dollars. So where will that money come from? Casey Decker with our Verify team explains. Our sources, U.S. Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, the Federal Highway Administration, and Reinsurance News. We can verify it's true the federal government will pay a significant amount of the costs for rebuilding the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's already allocated $60 million. That money came from an emergency fund created by the bipartisan infrastructure law passed in 2021. But the emergency fund won't cover all the costs. Buttigieg says Congress will likely have to approve more funding. And President Biden says he expects they will. They have after disasters in the past, like the Minneapolis highway collapse in 2007. But we can also verify it's not likely that taxpayers will be covering all of the costs. Insurance companies are also expected to foot some of the bill. Any uh, private party that is found responsible and liable will be held accountable. The ship that crashed into the bridge has insurance, and that insurance group in turn has insurance of its own to specifically cover major disasters. Yellen says it will take time to sort out the details, but she expects insurers will eventually pay for some of the rebuilding efforts. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. And President Biden promised today that the federal government will pay for every dollar to rebuild the bridge. That pledge, however, is already facing some resistance from Republicans in Congress. Next on To The Point, millions of people on alert for possible aftershocks after an earthquake rattles parts of New Jersey. We are tracking showers still continuing across areas of the valley with hail now just south of Modesto. How much longer these showers and Sierra snow showers will be lasting? Plus a warning ahead of tax day, the email scam that you need to know about. And later in the show on the back roads, we take you to a lake in the Sierra where you can go ice fishing. This is one of the largest earthquakes on the East Coast occur in the last century. Tonight, millions of people are on alert after a 4.8 magnitude earthquake rattled the tri-state area this morning. The earthquake was centered near Lebanon, New Jersey, about 50 miles west of New York City, and several aftershocks were also reported, including one measuring at a four magnitude. Now, there have been no reports of injuries or major infrastructure damage. And back here at home, two earthquakes with a magnitude of 4.3 and 4.5 struck near Belden and Plumas County shortly after 6.30 last night. Experts say the earthquakes were called a doublet, and thankfully there are no significant reports of damage or injuries from either earthquake. But let's get straight into your weather with meteorologist Carly Gomez. How are we looking for this weekend? Yeah, actually right now the scattered showers are beginning to move out just earlier within the last few hours. What we're looking at is some pretty intense snow flurries in the Sierra and for the valley. The scattered showers were moving their way down the valley spots. Right now what we're looking at is isolated showers and thunderstorms. Cold overnight to near freezing uh, conditions are expected as well as we'll move into the evening hours, but much warmer temperatures next week as we'll be looking at 70s and 80s. Yes.
So just get ready for that if you're excited. That low pressure system is slowly moving to the east. We're going to actually have to wait for the high pressure to expand because right behind it, we have this kind of moisture plume coming in. That's going to bring in some partly cloudy skies for your Saturday afternoon and even a little bit of those chances for some Sierra snow showers. Very light at that. So you can still go skiing and snowboarding on Sunday. I'll be looking at some light spots as well into the foothill spots before the high pressure expands. Now, right now in the overnight hours, we're going to be seeing clearing skies, which will lead to also a frost advisory closer toward the ocean there. As you see areas around Napa, Santa Rosa, and to the foothill spots in those really coastal range areas could see some near freezing temperatures if not below freezing for the valley right around the mid 30s expected we even looking at some frost advisory near Livermore and moving into the early morning hours we will be looking at temperatures dropping as low as those mid 30s but the future cast wind gusts will be a little breezy this weekend we do expect to see a bit a bit of a pickup here about 15 to 20 mile per hour winds coming in Sunday as we get a little bit of that movement happening from the north and northwest and that'll bring in some scattered showers for the foothills and the high Sierra into Sunday afternoon but by Monday Things are changing quickly. Just take a look at our future cast radar. Saturday afternoon, we start to get a little cloud coverage, maybe a high elevation snow flurry. And then Sunday, you get a few spotty showers right there into the foothills, mostly with Sierra snow flurries into the afternoon. And then they're gone once again with clearing skies into Monday and breezy skies. Breezy conditions also playing a part into your Monday. But really, we only have about an inch left of that snowfall remaining for our foothill and Sierra spots there. Uh, the European model showing something very similar, zero to maybe one one inch of snow left and then we'll be looking at temperatures right around those mid to low 50s and low 60s in Ion Bay Area looking at temperatures in the low 60s and taking a look at the 10 day forecast that'll bring us from mid 60s on Sunday to 70s Monday and Tuesday and we are back into the 80s by next week. All right, Carly, thank you. Next on to the point, a tax scam warning, what the IRS commissioner says you need to watch out for. Plus, it's the end of an era. One of America's favorite bargain destinations is going out of business. And later on the back roads, we take a trip to one of the few places in California where you can go ice fishing. All right, in your price points tonight, we have an urgent tax scam warning with tax day just days away. The IRS is warning of a fake email that's circulating. Take a look at this. The email appears to be on IRS letterhead and says in part, dear taxpayer, we hope this message finds you well. We are writing to inform you about an important matter regarding your recent tax return filing. Now, ABC News spoke with the IRS commissioner who says it's fake. First giveaway is the first line where it talks about a third round of economic impact payments being available. That is a program that ended in 2021. And he also points out the cutoff logo, the date and sender in the wrong spot and directions to click a link. Now that's important to note because the IRS does not contact you by telephone, text message, or initiate contact by email. If they need to reach out to you, they will do so by sending a letter to your home or to your business. And it's a very sad day. One of America's favorite bargain destinations. I know it's definitely one of my 99 cents only. It is going out of business. Their discount store announced that they will close all 371 stores locations in California, Arizona, Nevada, and Texas. The company cited the impact of COVID-19, shifting consumer demand and other economic factors as the reasons to close. And the company will be liquidating all of its merchandise. All right, things are a little chilly on the back roads this week. Tonight, John Bartell takes us to a lake in the Sierra. That's one of the few places in California where you can go ice fishing. The mountain community of Kirkwood in Alpine County is best known for its ski resort. Today, we're not hitting the mountain slopes for a day of skiing. We're going fishing on the frozen waters of Capel's Lake with experienced angler Doug Busey and his family. Make sure that you keep this straight and just drill down. I have never been ice fishing before, so Doug thought it would be a good idea for me to experience drilling a hole in the ice the old fashioned way. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot more work. Yeah, that it is. While I was struggling, Doug made quick work of his hole with a gas powered ice auger. Oh, I see some water, so that's, uh, that's good, huh? Cables Lake sits at about 7,800 feet in elevation, making it a prime candidate for ice fishing because the cold temperatures up here freeze the surface of the water in thick layers of ice and snow. Ice fishing on Cables Lake, is it, uh, is it pretty good? 
you know, it can be good. It, you know, sometimes it's not. You know, it's, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. <laughs> that's true. Doug is a straight shooter when it comes to talking about fish, and he kind of has to be. For over 30 years now, Doug's been reporting on fish conditions in the Eastern Sierra. You'll find his reports in a number of publications, including the Tahoe Daily Tribune, and for a while, even on cable access TV. <laughs> I'm a fishing fool uh -huh. and a fishing reporter. Once your hole's drilled in the ice, fishing is pretty easy. You put some bait on the hook and drop it down the hole. A comfy chair is also important you're gonna do a lot of waiting. What do they do during the winter while they're under there? I mean, is it dark under there right now? I mean. You know, I've never crawled down in my hole okay. before. <laughs> <laughs> well, to answer my own question, I dropped a camera down the hole. And as you can see, it's not that exciting, but you do get a look at how thick the ice is at Capel's Lake. Tell somebody to go actually onto the ice unless it's six, eight inches. <laughs> Doug says Cables Lake holds a variety of fish, but we're after trout, more specifically rainbow, brown, and Mackinac trout. Unfortunately, we were not getting any bites. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of sitting and waiting and crossing fingers, huh? It is. Yeah. If the fish aren't biting in your first hole, you can always drill a second or a third hole. Doug says it's not uncommon to drill upwards of a dozen or more holes. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. If you get hungry from the lack of catching, you can always head up to the Capels Lake Lodge for a burger. They've been providing good food and a cozy view of the lake since it was built in the 1940s. Uh, we've done a complete remodel down, down here. New owner Mike Nikolai has been putting a lot of work into updating the cabins in the marina. In the summer, you can even rent a fishing boat, which to me sounded like a better idea than ice fishing. That is, until this happened. Oh my gosh, I can see it. Yeah, baby. Just when we were about to call it quits, I hooked a monster Mackinac, AKA lake trout. Oh, oh I just broke it too. <laughs> yeah. That's a lake trout. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. There's an old saying, a bad day of fishing is still better than a good day at work. Well, I personally had a good day of fishing while working. From the icy waters of Capel's Lake, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back row. <laughs> All right, next on To The Point, the road to Paris is starting and Folsom for one Olympic athlete. One race at a time. That's how the Sexer family in Folsom is preparing ahead of the 2024 Olympics, where their daughter, Michelle, a two-time Olympian rower, will be competing once again. We caught up with them before they head out of town to help Michelle prepare for the long journey. Michelle's on the phone. Yay! What have you been doing today? Well... It's hard for Mary Sexer to get her daughter, Michelle, on the phone these days. She's probably out on the water. <laughs> Okay, we, we love, love you. Michelle, we love you. Okay, love you. Her daughter has been a little busy training. The Olympic trials for all the other boat classes are about to start. For the 2024 Paris Olympics, a proud moment for Mary. This is when they um, won the Royal Henley in England. As her daughter opens a new door in her career, Mary opens an old one. I come in here sometimes just for some if I need some motivation or some reflection. Michelle's bedroom documents her journey that started around 13 years old. Her passion kept her rowing through high school, college, and then she got the call. Some Olympic coach that said, we are opening up a center in Oklahoma City. You'd be the only female there, <laughs> but we'd love for you to come and start rowing. Michelle is now a two-time Olympian rower. The comeback kids are Tokyo bound. I go back and I read that sometimes knowing the journey that they had been on. Her little girl living big dreams. She has just embraced every single day that she practices, every day that she's with her teammates, every day that she's racing. She is really good about staying very present, and I really admire that. I think that's a hard thing to do, you know. Does she get some of that dedication from you? I've done a few things in my life, so I would, I would hope that I've been a good role model for her. This might be Michelle's last shot at gold. This is the last year the Olympics are going to have her particular event, and she may retire after this, and so it would be a nice way to kind of sunset out of the sport. 
Well, I don't know if she'll ever get out of the sport, but <laughs> she does own a boat. <laughs> For now, Michelle and Mary are taking it one race at a time. Just so proud of her. I mean, people are like, oh, congratulations. And of course, I embrace that, but it's been all her. You know, she's had to do the hard work, the early mornings, the disappointments, the challenges, the physically hurting to make this dream come true. All right, Michelle, show them what you got. Pride. You see it in their smiles and at their front door. Just the sweetest family you could imagine. And don't forget, Sexer family, if you're watching, you said when Michelle wins, we'll be back having dinner with you. So we'll see you this summer. And Michelle, we wish you well on your Olympic journey. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. And remember, strangers are people you just haven't gotten a chance to meet yet. So take a little bit of time to get to know someone. Have a great night and a great weekend. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. The To The Point team and I love hearing from you, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at tothepoint at abc10.com, or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.